Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on the EU response to organised crime. Organised crime is a growing threat to the EU and its citizens, and new digital technologies combined with open borders and free trade only make it easier for criminals. But the EU is stepping up police and judicial cooperation, as well as information sharing, in order to stay one step ahead of them and make sure that crime does not pay. Stay with us. Drug trafficking, trafficking in human beings, migrant smuggling, document fraud, cyber crime, firearms trafficking, environmental crime, organised property crime, economic and financial crime, you name it. Organised crime takes several forms and it costs the European Union between 218 and 282 billion euros annually. It is certainly a lucrative business, considering its proceeds are estimated at around 110 billion a year and only 1% of that is confiscated. A growing number of organised crime groups are active in the EU, around 5,000 according to Europol, and they're extremely flexible and difficult to track as the structures are often loose or ad hoc and profit from the cover of an anonymous cyberspace. Nearly half of these groups are involved in more than one criminal activity in order to mitigate risks, reduce operational costs and maximise profits. So what are the main criminal activities in the EU? Let's have a look. Drug trafficking has been and continues to be one of the favourite activities of organised criminal groups. This includes cannabis, cocaine and increasingly synthetic drugs. In 2019 alone, the EU sees 75 tonnes of drugs and chemicals. Trafficking in human beings is another serious organised crime. Thousands of people are trafficked into the EU every year and forced into the sex business or exploited for labour or forced criminality. And most of them are women and children. The migrant smuggling business has also become a large, profitable and sophisticated criminal market. In 2015, at the height of the migration crisis, it generated between 5 and 6 billion euros in profits. And, sadly, there's no shortage in demand. But many other forms of crime affect the lives of European citizens. By the end of this podcast, for example, five homes in the EU will have been burgled and the phones, computers or jewellery taken will be immediately sold online. European citizens are also increasingly worried about cybercrime and rightly so, as in some member states it accounts for half of the crimes and attacks have increased as a result of the coronavirus crisis and more and more people working from home and shopping online. Economic and financial crimes, such as fraud, money laundering or more sophisticated financial schemes, cost the EU billions of euros every year. The problem is that criminals often combine legal and illegal financial transactions, which makes it extremely hard for law enforcement agencies to detect them. So, how well equipped is the EU to fight organised crime? Stay with us. Since 2016, much effort has gone into creating an effective and genuine security union, and member states, especially in the Schengen area, increasingly rely on cross-border and EU-level cooperation to support their national security efforts. But the road to proper police and judicial cooperation in the EU has been a long and bumpy one, as national law enforcement and judicial authorities are often reluctant to share information with others. That's right. Since 2009, however, the fight against organised crime is a legal competence shared between the EU and its member states, and a number of measures and legal instruments have been adopted to prevent and combat it. Law enforcement cooperation was also strengthened by the creation of three EU agencies, Europol, to improve police cooperation, Eurojust, centred around judicial cooperation, and CEPOL, to improve training capabilities. In recent years, the EU has also stepped up information exchange by modernising law enforcement databases and making them interoperable. So how does all this work in practice? Well, it's not that there are policemen with an EU flag on their uniforms arresting criminals across Europe. Operational activities are still the responsibility of member states. But the EU does everything within its powers to assist them and to coordinate their actions so that all European citizens can benefit from increased security. In 2019, for example, the EU's operational mechanism to find organised international crime, known as impact, led, amongst other things, to 8,000 arrests, 
the identification of more than 1,400 victims of trafficking in human beings and child sexual abuse, the seizure of 6,000 weapons, as well as 75 tons of drugs and chemicals, and the freezing and seizure of 77 million euros worth of criminal assets. And because results prove that the EU is stronger together, several EU agencies, such as Europol, Eurojust, the European Border and Coast Guard and EU LISA, the agency managing large-scale IT systems, have recently had their mandates reinforced. So what challenges lie ahead? Stay with us. Well, despite the increasing cooperation between member states and the EU, there are still several gaps hindering a more effective fight against organised crime, as highlighted by the European Parliamentary Research Service. We're talking about lack of ratification, implementation and enforcement of international and EU norms, gaps in the EU legal framework and shortcomings in operational cooperation, among others. So what solutions do we have? The key is more and better cooperation, but also, maybe, giving EU agencies such as Europol and Eurojust genuine investigative and prosecution powers. Several measures could also be adopted to allow national criminal justice bodies and police to operate in another member state more efficiently. There's certainly no lack of ideas, but is the political will there? Well, as stated by Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, The fight against organised crime is and will continue to be a priority for the EU in the years to come. In its work programme for 2020 and in the recently published 2020 to 2025 Security Union Strategy, the Commission announced a number of measures to step up the fight against organised crime. A number of action plans on drugs, against firearms trafficking and to combat child sexual abuse online have already been presented and more are in the pipeline. The EU is also determined to keep enhancing operational cooperation and information sharing and to further reinforce the mandate of agencies such as Europol so that it can better deal with the evolving nature of cyber and financial crime. Furthermore, the focus will be on ensuring that criminals cannot enjoy their ill-gotten gains by improving the tools and procedures to freeze criminal assets and confiscate the proceeds of crime. You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. Mm -hmm.